What's been the focus and how are you shaping that plan of action? Well, it, it's been a, a great first month with the team, for sure. Um, you know, we jumped right into it with, uh, with earnings uh, and uh, some great in, engagement with our investors. Um, but it's really been inspiring for me to see, as I've come into Pinterest, the things that I really admired from the outside in terms of Pinterest's mission and vision and uh, how much people really care about it being a positive place on the internet, a place that people can go for daily inspiration, um, whether they're looking for things to make or to do or to buy. Um, it's been really great to see what a dedicated team we have around those things and the really great momentum the team has built uh, over many years, uh, as well as a lot of exciting things that uh, we're in the midst of now. Now, you were running commerce at Google. Before that, you were the COO of PayPal. You ran Venmo. You ran Braintree. You were actually on our show uh, several times in that role. How did the conversation start with Pinterest, and how did you both come to, to the decision that this was the right call? Um, so, you know, have admired what Ben and the team here built uh, over many years. Uh, and more recently, Ben and I started talking about, uh, you know, not only, you know, how he was thinking about what he wanted for himself, but also what he hoped for from Pinterest. Uh, and there's just a lot of really great alignment on those things around uh, the vision for the business. Uh, I think, you know, as, as you touched on, uh, you know, in the intro, uh, the opportunity to go from inspiration to realization, I think is just a really unique thing uh, that doesn't exist in many places. Finding inspiration and intent in the same platform uh, is really unique and uncommon. And I think as much as there's a tremendous amount of discovery and inspiration and intent on Pinterest, the opportunity to help people take that all the way through to realization, I think is going to be a great next chapter in where Pinterest can go. Uh, and of course, you know, making sure to continue on all the really great inspiration and discovery that's already the core of what people love about the platform. There was some surprise that Ben left. Obviously, he's a founder. He has been there for years. Can you give us any more insight into why he decided that now was the time to move on? Well, you know, Ben's done an amazing job over the course of 12 years building a business from zero. Uh, and so, uh, you know, tons of admiration and respect for Ben as an entrepreneur. Uh, and the great thing is, you know, Ben and I spent a lot of time and, you know, we have a lot of common vision for where the company can go. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited to you know, continue engaging with Ben. Uh, he's a very engaged and passionate board member uh, and someone who I continue to spend a lot of time with. Um, and again, you know, he's done an amazing job of building Pinterest to what it is today. And it's a great partnership in terms of where we take it going forward. I'm a big pinner and, you know, know that it's a super useful product. And as you say, it sits at this really important intersection of social and e-commerce and search. Some would say there hasn't been a lot of innovation or evolution over the last several years. How do you want to better harness that power that Pinterest has? Yeah, well, I think two things I'd say. One, I think the team has innovated quite a lot. I think if you look at the platform today versus where it's been in the past, I think uh, there's a lot to be really excited about. Um, you know, you have, you know, in the shift to video, for example, uh, we, we share this, you know, on our earnings that we now have 10% plus of our engagement is coming over video while also still staying really true to what users expect in terms of, you know, bringing together a bunch of really great inspirational images and things that they're interested in. So I think it's a good example of innovating with users, but I think, you know, there's also a lot that's still left to be done. And I think that really is around how do you help people harness that inspiration and intent that they have. One of the great things about Pinterest is that, you know, people aren't just casually browsing. It's not just lean back. People are coming with an intent and a purpose, and they're coming at a part of their journey where they still haven't yet decided, you know, what it is they want to do or to buy. They may know they're looking to put together a great outfit or plan a, plan a party or redesign a room, but they're at this moment where they're still trying to figure out, well, what do I want in that room? What do I want that outfit to be? Or what do I want that party to look like? That's a really unique moment in the user's journey in a place where I think our platform is quite unique and where we have a lot of opportunity to now take that user from not just I could put together that great outfit or I could put together that great uh, room, uh, but I can go all the way to action and finding the things I want to buy to put that together or find the places to connect with to go help me take the next step in that journey. And so I think those are places where there's a lot of forward innovation left to go. And I think right. you see that continuing to resonate with users 
and with advertisers. I think you're seeing that play out in the ads business where that combination of inspiration and intent is, is really what's making Pinterest a must buy for advertisers, even as advertisers are shifting uh, you know, how they think about what they need to be doing. That combination of inspiration and intent really stands out and I think makes Pinterest a must buy for advertisers as well. Well, what do you, how do you think your Google and payments experience uh, can play here? I mean, is the biggest opportunity advertising? Is the biggest opportunity e-commerce? Is the dream to be able to see something on Pinterest and buy it or figure out, uh, you know, where that pillow came from or how somebody can, can make it if they want to make it themselves? Um, well, yes to each of those. Um, I think how you put those things together really matters. And I think you, if you look at what I think Pinterest does really well, it is a curated journey where, yes, there's a lot of really great AI and ML that's helping put together um, you know, things that when you're trying to figure out what it is that you want to do, uh, whether it's making or doing or buying, that we're going to bring a lot of really great inspiration together uh, on those things. But it's curated. Uh, and it's not just AI and ML figuring those things out. How do you figure out what's the you know, not just what's a really great dress that I want, but what's the right set of uh, accessories to go with it? Well, there's a lot of human curation where people are making those associations on the platform and where I think we really stand out and are quite unique in our ability to bring those things together. So yes, there's opportunity to take people from the inspiration the end to the realization, but I think there's some real superpowers that the Pinterest platform has that are not just AI and ML, but the community of penners that are really helping to shape these associations of what's a great room going to look like in this aesthetic? What's a really great outfit, not just a great you know item, uh, but what's a great outfit? And really helps us think right. about how do we solve shopping even more than buying? I think the first 20 years of e-commerce were really solving more for buying, not as much shopping. You know, the first 20 years is how do I find a thing the cheapest and the fastest? But if you think about the you know what happened in the physical world, so much more of shopping was about the journey, walking the bazaar, being inspired, um, finding the thing you didn't know was there, and that hasn't been well solved for in the digital world. And I think Pinterest has claimed to that as much or more than anybody else, and we see a lot of that already, and we can take users a lot further down that journey. Elliot recently took a big stake. What have been your communications with them? What are their expectations? Well, you know, we shared this on our earnings. Uh, Elliot and I both made uh, comments on this uh, at our earnings. You know, we've had a really collaborative dialogue uh, with Elliot. Um, we share a lot of conviction and vision for where the business can go. And so it's been a good engaging dialogue there. Um, and, you know, the investor community uh, I've spent a lot of time with in past lives. And that community knows that I really care about making sure we have good engagement with our investors uh, and listening and understanding, just as I want to listen and understand to all of our stakeholders. And so uh, we've had a good engaging dialogue with Elliot, just as we'll you know, uh, continue to have good engaging dialogue with all of our investors. And it's great to have a, a large, sophisticated investor that has conviction about our business and shares uh, our optimism uh, for the future of Pinterest. Pinterest initially led the way on you know, creating a better workplace culture former engineer Tracy Cho was really active on the representation of women. But since then, the company has been accused of gender discrimination and race discrimination. Employees staged a walkout. Um, in your conversations over the last 30 days, what have you learned about how much has been done and what is still left to do? Yeah. So I think this is, you know, these events of a few years ago, I think that the company has made tremendous progress on these. It's obviously something Ben and I spent a lot of time talking about. And I spent a lot of time with the board talking about before joining. And one of the things I loved was seeing how much um, Ben and the team, the board, uh, all had really leaned in on not just wanting to go take action on these things and get to better places on these things, but to really start to lead the way on these. And so as we think about diversity and inclusion, as we think about how we build a really positive community, uh, one of the things that I think is so inspiring to me about Pinterest is that it's, it's a very positive place on the internet uh, where people are going to be inspired and uplifted. It's not a place where people are going to uh, shout at their neighbor about their politics or those kinds of things. It's a place where people are going to be lifted up and inspired and to say, well, of course we want to create a community inside the company that matches that, I think is a, a great 
uh, combination. And I think there's been tremendous progress on that, but something where uh, I think for any company, that work is never done and there's always more to do. So definitely something that is top of mind for me and will be, continue to be a priority for me and the team. Pinterest has some prime San Francisco real estate. We were talking about that in the break. We're looking at some videos of inside the office right now. But in San Francisco, there is concern that this, you know, heyday of office culture is over. How are you thinking about that and balancing work from home versus people coming back to the office and reinvigorating an office culture? So I think it's well. Number one, it's been great to be in the office with with uh, with Pinterest uh, with the Pinterest team. Uh, Great to see people back in the office again and collaborating. Uh, so, you know, I think it's really good to see more of that happening. At the same time, we're in a new world that's very different than what it was pre-pandemic. And I think uh, hybrid work, remote work, these are all going to be really important parts of how you think about building uh, a highly talented and engaged employee base. Uh, and I think there's real opportunities there that you think about what that means in terms of attracting more diverse talent, for example, as you can reach into new geographies or attract people that may be balancing different things uh, in, in, in their work-life balance. I think this right. notion of there's no one size fits all, I think is really fantastic uh, in terms of how we not only make sure that we're meeting our team where they are, but that we're opening new doors as to how we attract great talent and where that great talent can come from.